subscribe ecofan for more educational videos welcome dear learners today we are going to discuss about the green revolution in connection with the environment so the green revolution refers mainly to a dramatic increase in cereal green yields in most of the develop, uh, developing countries the green revolution or we can say the third agriculture revolution is a set of research technology transfer initiatives that occurred between 1950 and the late 1960s that increased the agriculture production in parts of world beginning most markedly uh, markedly in late 60s so it also can be defined as the renovation of agriculture practices uh, which began in mexico in 1940s it started spreading to other parts of the globe in 1950s and 60s as a result of the success of producing more agriculture products and hence increasing the amount of calories produced per acre of land or we can see the agriculture land researchers in mexico developed broadly adapted short stemmed and disease resistant varieties of wheat that did extremely well in converting fertilizers and water into high yields mainly the green production the seeds improved with the uh, instrumental in boosting mexican wheat production and averted famine in india and pakistan so the initiatives resulted in adaptation or adoption uh, of new technologies including high yielding varieties of cereals like wheat maize uh, rice especially devar devar varieties of uh, wheat and rice it was associated with the chemical fertilizers agrochemicals controlled water supply usually involving the surface irrigation and newer methods of cultivation including mechanization so the green revolution was the package of the high yielding varieties associated with the chemical fertilizers use of chemical fertilizers pesticides water supply and intensive agriculture mechanization so when we talk about the green revolution in india the green revolution was a period in india basically in agriculture when it was converted from the agriculture system uh, from agriculture in india to the agriculture system due to the adoption of modern uh, methods of technology such as use of high yielding varieties seeds tractors irrigation facilities pesticides and fertilizers so back then under the uh, premiership of congress leader indira gandhi the green revolution within the commencement in 1968 leading to a increase in food production especially in the states of punjab haryana and uttar pradesh so uh, the main uh, person which was dealing with the green revolution was back then the director of indian agriculture research in a chute ms swaminathan which uh, we call the father of green revolution in india also so the major milestones in uh, this undertaking via the development of high yielding varieties of maize rust resistant uh, strains of wheat so the basic elements of the green revolution in india was based on three components so that was continuous expansion of the farming areas double cropping existing uh, for farmlands and use uh, and using of seeds with improved genetics so why was there need of uh, this uh, the green revolution in india so as we know the bengal famine the world's worst recorded food disaster happened in 1943 in british ruled india due to an estimated of 4 million death at first they feel that there is an acute shortage of food i mean the back then the government uh, in the area acute shortage of the food production in the area however 
Some feel that while food shortage was a contributor to the problem, another was a result of the hysteria related uh, to the World War II, which, may, which made food supply a low priority for the British, uh, British rulers to the Indian population. So when the British left India in 1947, India continued to be hunted by the memories of Bengal famine. It was therefore natural that the food security was paramount item of freedom, uh, free India's agenda. This awareness led on one hand the Green Revolution in India and on another hand measures to ensure the businessman would never again be able to hold food for the reason for the profit. So these were some reasons why the Green Revolution was initiated in India because India had to feed its population monsters, growing population. <clears throat> So what are the advantages of the Green Revolution? India transformed itself from a starving nation to an exporter of the food. This earned admiration for the India in the community of, uh, of the nation, especially in the third world countries. And Green Revolution created plenty of jobs, not only for the agriculture workers, but also industrial workers by creating by creation of lateral facilities such as factories and hydroelectric power stations. So the crop areas under high yielding varieties needed more water, more fertilizer, more pesticides, fungicides, and certainly other chemicals. This part, the growth of local manufacture sector, the industrial growth created more new jobs and contributed to the country's gross domestic production, that is GDP. The increase in the uh, irrigated uh, create, uh, created creation uh, the increase in the irrigation created a new uh, I mean the new uh, demand for the new dams harnessing monsoon water. The water stored was used to create hydroelectric power. This in turn boosted industrial growth, created jobs, and improved the quality of life of the people, particularly in villages or rural areas. India back back all loans it had taken from the World Bank and its affiliates to the Green Revolution. This approved India credit worthiness in the eyes of lending agencies. So this was the big achievement of India. Countries with uh, countries which were facing a shortage of agriculture labor asked the Indian government to supply them with a farmer, a farmer's experience in the method of Green Revolution. These people remitted a part of incomes into their relative, uh, relative in India. This not only helped in their relatives, but also added, uh, albeit modestly, to India's foreign exchange earning. So these were some uh, local or national developments that were occurred, or the growth that occurred because of the Green Revolution. But then there are some environmental impacts of the Green Revolution. That is the main focus of this lecture. So the e Green Revolution in India has achieved self-sufficiency in the food production that we know. However, in the states of Haryana, particularly Haryana, uh, uh, Haryana Punjab and Uttar Pradesh has resulted in a continuous environmental degradation, particularly in soil, vegetation, water resources, soil organic matter levels are declining and use of chemical inputs is intensifying and uh, newly introduced crop varieties have been responsive to inputs, but this has necessitates both increased fertilizer application and use of irrigation resulting in water uh, contamination by nitrate uh, and phosphate particularly and changes in groundwater level. With 82% of the geographic area already under cultivation, the scope for increased productivity lies in further intensification, which is crucially dependent on more energy intensive inputs. So declining nutrient, uh, nutrient use efficiency, physical and chemical degradation of the soil and inefficient 
water use have been limiting crop productivity and uh, wildest the use of monocultures because we use the rice and wheat uh, dwarf varieties so, and uh, that is the monocultures mechanization and an excessive reliance on the chemical plant uh, protection have reduced crop plant animal diversity in recent years and about 60 percent of the geographical area facing the soil degradation that is because of the water logging salinity alkalinity which threatens the region's food security uh, currently and in future also since 1985 the water table has risen more than one meter annually and patches of salinity have started to appear at the farm levels uh, and this situation is worse in higher rainfall areas where water logging follows shortly after the rains apart from the affecting agriculture crops a high water table causes floods even following slight rains due to the reduced shortage capacity of the soils such ecological impacts are motivating farmers to reduce fertilizer and pesticide use and this has led to an increase in investment in alternate technology or alternative technologies and production and products including an interesting in, in uh, for example in integrated pest management or integrated fertilizer management and increasing pressure of the population on the land uh, dictates uh, the need of potential utilization of available land however large parts of the land are degraded by uh, desertification soil salinity water logging floods and droughts due to insufficient agriculture practices and deforestation has caused excessive soil erosion so the increasing demand of the food fodder fiber and fuel can all only be met through the bringing more of these degraded areas into the cultivation uh, or the forestry so uh, the sensing the gravity of the problem the government of india has set up a national wasteland development board with the objective of bringing the wastelands under the productive use in the country through a massive program of afforestation due to green revolution we have lost many of our agriculture biodiversity when the farmers adopt to plant the new improved crop varieties have raised new cross breeds of the livestock many traditional local varieties become ex extinct the widespread use of pesticides and other agrochemicals have led to a severe environmental degradation and endangered public health the world wide use of chemical fertilizers has degraded the soil which results uh, to the loss of humus the loss of uh, soil uh, humus or organic material soil becomes cracked and sand the water uh, and the water retention capacity of the soil decreases so these were some environmental impacts which include particularly deforestation because we produce or we uh, brought more land into the uh, cultivation so there is reforest deforestation more use of water for irrigation so water logging more use of groundwater that increase the salinity pesticide pollution because we use pesticides that finds its way in our water bodies or groundwater so this uh, reaches to the uh, various kinds of food chains soil erosion because of the deforestation declining or raising the groundwater table or to the brackish water because the brackish there is a if salt water intrusion in the coastal uh, areas also so there are some other uh, impacts also like monoculture because we particularly didn't go for the what we call the multi crop uh, production we got for the monoculture because we particularly grow rice and wheat uh, for two seasons then more use of fertilizer that leads to the fertilizer pollution biodiversity loss because uh, less use of indigenous varieties and there is a greenhouse gas emission this is the biggest problem when we go for more paddy or rice production there is stagnant water and that leads to the release of methane gas and the greenhouse gas emission <clears throat> so also dependence on non-renewable resources non-renewable resource of energy for the pumping of the water for uh, production of the fertilizers that leads uh, and that uh, demands the use of energy 
so this uh, leads more dependence on the non-renewable resources of energy and also the land use there is a continuous land use under which more of the land is brought under the cultivation maybe it is the wasteland or the forest land so these all leads to an impact or the ecological imbalance uh, because the green revolution was kind of agriculture which is not sustainable because uh, in sustainable agriculture we go for more uh, circular kind of uh, inputs where the we can use a farmyard manures or composts we mostly rely on the chemical fertilizers and nowadays the focus has been changed there is the focus towards more integrated pest management fertilizer management in which there is a minimal use of the chemical pesticides or fertilizers so these were some environmental impacts of the green revolution besides the positive impacts of the green revolution i hope you all enjoy thank you mm -hmm.